And hello everyone, welcome back to a Lua tutorial. Today we'll be learning how to work with files, so reading files and writing to them. So there are two ways we can do both of these. And I'm going to start off with the most simplest way possible. The most straightforward is the just you do and it's done type of way. So currently, if I were to go here, these are all the files in my current folder. I don't know, I should probably open up a file manager so you can see them. I'll go to documents and I'll go to my trash folder and to my Lua folder. And there we go. So that's all there is inside of here. Just a Lua file, just one Lua file. So let's create a file. So to do that, the most basic way is to just go io.output. And this basically means input output and then dot output. This is going to create a file. And if the file already exists, it's going to empty the file. So we'll, we'll see what that means in a second. So let's go here and say uh, my file dot txt. Right. So this will also select the file. So if you are selecting a file or if you are working with files, then this one will also select the file for you so you can work with that file. That is why the following piece of code, io.write, will work without a problem because we have selected that file with io.output. We have said we're going to output to that file. Here we can then say something like hello, hello world, right? And then io.close. And this will close the file. It's highly recommended that you do close files after you work it with them. Because closing not closing a file could cause some leaks in your program, which you don't usually want. So maybe you're trying to write to a file again and you forgot to close it. You might get an error trying to write to that file because the file was never closed. Anyhow, we can save that. And now if we were to run this, so Lua and then main.lua. Then as you can see here is a myfile.txt and if I bring this up, myfile.txt. So this is just everything that's inside of this folder right here. So I'm going to close that. We can then open this and inside of it there is a hello world. Pretty cool. Now to show you what I mean by it will over it will empty the file is if I were to go here and add uh, let's say a hello world for exclamation mark this time. Save it, run the program. Now if I open up this file, the previous hello world is gone. But this time there's a new hello world with an exclamation mark. So whatever we put in here in here will overwrite the file. So you should only use this if you're creating a new file or if you're emptying a file. Maybe you're, you have a specific save file. Quickly I output, I write, I close. Done. So that is when you would use that. Now let's say we want to read from the file. Reading from the file is rather simple. So we can keep this io that close here, and we can just say io dot input this time, and this will get input from the file. So it will read the file. In this case, my file txt right there, and then io dot read, and this will read the file, and we can just save that instead of a variable. So local file is equal to that. And here we don't put text. Here there's something special we can put in here. So there are a few things. Let's start with a number. So let's say we put a number in here. For example, five. This will read five characters. So I'm just going to go uh, here and say print file. So you can actually see what's happening. So it only read five characters. So in the first five characters, which would be hello. And in this case, it says hello world. So if we were to say only two characters, save it, and now we're we'll read two characters. If we were to say a hundred characters, and we knew it doesn't have that many characters because it's just hello world, it will just read everything then. So you don't have to worry about that too much. So that's the first thing you can do. The next thing you can do is you can go here and say uh, in quotation marks, star, and then no number and this will read a number currently we don't have a number in here so i'm just quickly going to put an 88 in here save and then go here save run it and we get 88 so if we try to say file plus 99 let's see if that will do anything 
And as you can see, because we read it as a number, it went one eight. It went up to one eight seven because we added ninety nine to it. So let's do specifically read it as a number. You could also do it by putting a number in here, and that will also allow a number read. So it will still give you. 187.0 because remember Lua doesn't really work with type so it will automatically guess what it is but with in this case for example if we were to say uh, s there at the end now if we were to run this then we'll get an error and if we were to say here number instead then it will still work because it will only read the number it will not read that s so that is why number can be very useful. So if there is any under text in there, you can just use number. Anyhow, so let's put hello world back in here. And in here we can just say star line, and this will read a line. So if I were to just remove that at the end and run this file, then we get hello world. If we were to add another line here, and we can make this Hello Jack this time. If we were to then run this, then we'll get hello world. If you we were to do this, and let's actually just put either read in here. I believe that would be the easiest way to go about this. I, I don't have to do that, I can just do this. And I can comment that out and I can say CB. Let's see what will happen then. First it reads hello world and then it reads hello Jack. So by saying I to read and then star line, this will move down the line after it has read that line. So if we were to do this again, we don't have another line to be read, so we'll receive a nil. So yeah, that is how you can read multiple lines at once. So we can just remove these, and we can actually just go back to our original setup here. Cool. And then last but not least, we also have all, and this will just read the entire file. It wouldn't care about lines or numbers you just read the entire file and return it to us so yeah, that's the most basic version of reading and writing to a file so we can stay with this and we don't need that iron input anymore so we can remove that now this local file we are going to say io.open instead so this will open the file then we need to specify the file so in this case my file and they want to specify the action we want to use on it in this case, we can, let's say, W. So this will mean write. As you can see here, there is read mode, write mode, append mode, and we can probably move down. Yes. W plus, update mode, all previous data erased, and you can just go read through all of these. I'm just going to cover the most basic. So in this case, that will be write mode. And remember to always have your uh, close here, but in this case, we can't use either close anymore. We can use file, colon, close, and this will close the file. So that's our new way of doing things. It's file and then colon. Now, in this case, we want to say in here, file, colon, write, and this will write to the file. My name is Netsu. Save it, and then if we were to run this, it will write to that file. And I forgot to put a .txt here, so it created a file as well. So we can just delete that file. So if the file doesn't exist, it will create it as well. Save it, and now if we do this, it will have rewritten this. And now it's my name is Netsu. So it will overwrite it, just keep that as note. Yeah, so that's how you can write to a file. Next up, if you want to append to a file, you can say A. So if, uh, let's just rewrite this file. Okay, so now it says, uh, my name is Netsu, and let's just do that. Cool. Now if you want to append to the file, you can use A, and that will append the text. So it won't, re it won't overwrite the file. Like up until now, we can only overwrite the file. We can't add to the file. So this will allow us to add to the file. And in this case, let's say, I'm going to add a backslash n so it can go to the new line, to the next line, because currently if I add to it, it will add to the back here. I want it to add to the bottom of this. So I'm going to create a new line. And I'm going to say, uh, Jack, he is old. And let, let's put a little bit of dialogue here. And then here we can say, Netsu. Yeah, I know. 
cool. Save that if we were to run this file. Then now we'll see this. My name is Nitsu. And then Jack. He is old. Nitsu. Yeah, I know. And we can add to that. If we were to run this again. If we were to run the little file again. As you can see, it gets added again. If you do it again, it just gets added to the bottom. So A is for appending and W is for writing. So it'll overwrite it if it's W. It won't overwrite it if it's A. So it's an append. Next, we have R for read. So this will read the file. In this case, we don't use file dot uh, file dot write here. We use file dot read, and we don't have to put anything in here. That uh, like this. So it works the same as before. We have our same arguments. We have our star all for all. We have our line for a line. We have our number for a number. It's up to you which you use. Uh, depending on the scenario, you might use something else. Anyhow, I'm going to say star and just all because I want to get everything. And I'm going to store this in a variable. Local red is, let's just go red so it doesn't mess with anything. And here, after a file has been closed, you can do this before a file has been closed. I just do it after because why not? Do that. If we run it now, we get everything that's inside of it. Only once a line, then of course you can say line here. Now, if you were to run it, now you get only one line. And yeah, that is the basics of reading and writing files. So yeah, there is, there you go. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and can now work with files in Lua. And I'll see you all again in the next Lua tutorial.